I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Ken Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Amrita Priya Darshni and this is FPC News. Tonight, floodwaters ravage Rewa Delta as river rises. Aerial footage shows devastation caused by floods. And residents take to rooftops to escape rising waters. The National Disaster Management Office says those living in low-lying communities along the Rewa River system are advised to move to higher ground or their nearest evacuation centre for their own safety. This is the Rewa River water level has surpassed warning levels and continues to rise. Those living in low-lying communities along the Rewa River system are advised to move to higher ground or their nearest evacuation centre. The Fiji Police Force, the Republic of Fiji Military Forces and disaster management officials are on the ground monitoring movements and assisting with evacuation. We now cross live to our journalist Kelly Vadala. Kelly, with Rewa River rising, what is the latest on the tropical depression? I'm Rita. As mentioned, the Rail River continues to rise and authorities are advising people to take precautionary measures. The level at the Rail Bridge was at was at 3.62 meters at 4 p.m., which is 1.82 meters above the warning level. So if you're living in the low-lying areas, you are advised to move to higher grounds. Now, the rain in most parts of the country has eased, but heavy rain warning still remains in force for Taviuni, Vanua Levu and the Lao Group. Flood warning remains in force for parts of Fiji. But for now, most parts of the country is experiencing fine weather as we move into the Christmas long weekend. Amrita. That's much of a relief, Kelly. Thank you for that update. It's seven days since Tropical Depression 04F system was spotted on radar. The worst affected areas are the central and western divisions, which experienced widespread flooding causing town closures, road closures and landslide among its more drastic effects. Maggie Boyle took to the skies to get a bird's eye view of what a week of TD-04F looks like from above. It's a sea of caramel of the flood kind. The deluge in the delta is plain to see, with the Rewa River not once but twice bursting its banks, inundating the surrounding communities. Villages like Waivo and Nasilai succumbed to floodwaters almost as high as the electric poles. Instead of cars on the road, bamboo rafts are now the staple, with the threatening high tide pushing water levels even higher. And it appears we're not out of the woods yet. Rain and wind has affected us getting to the other side of Raki Raki to see the situation there. Farming and grazing land has turned into brown pools. Commercial properties were not spared. The floodwaters were indiscriminate. A number of homes were destroyed or damaged by landslides across the country, much like this partially buried house on the Rewa Delta. Land overnight swallowed all by torrential downpours while TV. F is leaving the Fiji group. It'll be days yet before the flood waters recede entirely. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The devastation caused by flood waters yesterday has shocked many people living in Raki Raki and the nearby villages of the province of Ra. Raki Raki was one of the areas worst affected by the heavy downpour in the past few days. Ali Kimbia has the details. This was the scene in Raki Raki town this morning with businesses and families cleaning up while others tried to come to terms with the wrath of Mother Nature. This is one of the biggest floods I have ever seen in Raki Raki. All houses are underwater, even the shops and other stops and people were standing on the roof calling for help. 
Arriving while they were still recovering from the impact of tropical cyclone Winston, Tropical Depression 04F has put on hold Christmas plans for these residents. The police are helping us cleaning up and also taking families back to their homes, but I think this will take long because of the devastation of the floodwaters. For some families, hopes of rebuilding after T.C. Winston were dashed as building materials were washed away by floodwaters. All of my building materials that was given to me for my help for homes assistance has been washed away by floodwaters. And I'm hoping government will assist me again. It's been a tough year for Raki Raki resident, getting hit twice by natural disasters. And we can only hope that Mother Nature proves kinder in the new year. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. A total of 95 evacuation centers are activated as of this afternoon. Director Desmak Akapusi Tuifangalele has confirmed more evacuees are being sheltering at evacuation centers provided in the Central Division. Evacuees are being advised not to drink grog or liquor in the evacuation centers. The number for the Eastern Division remains at 46 with 418 evacuees. For Northern, revised to 21 with 564. For Western Division, eight current evacuation centers that are still open with 170 evacuees. For the Central Division, 20 evacuation centers open with 564 occupation so the total number of evacuation centers that are open has been revised to 95 and the current um, population in these evacuation centers revised to 1716. An initial assessment of damage from TD04F shows major damage to homes, root crops, vegetables, water pipes, electrical posts and roadways. According to Director Desmek Akapusi Tuifangalele, various ministries are still trying to assess the damage caused by the floods. The damage caused so far we have received agriculture remains at 52,000. That has not been revised. However, Water Authority of Fiji, they have come up with a preliminary estimate of 1.8 million for all their um, water systems around Fiji. The other sectors, we are still waiting for result to be received. People living on the Rewa Delta and surrounding areas have been severely affected in the past 24 hours as the Rewa River continued to rise. Residents of Cornivia Road and Tonga in Nosori have been advised to move to higher ground. Melitavanga was at the scene this morning and reports floodwaters have surrounded many homes and access has been cut off for many people. The situation in Nosori has worsened in the last few hours as thousands of people are being affected by rising floodwaters. A resident of Cornivia says floodwaters has entered a number of houses and many farms are also underwater. My farm has suffered. I had around 4,000 dollar plants and a cassava pet. They are now damaged. My house is about five feet high and floodwaters have entered the house. Anare Evans says they had trouble reaching their home further down Cornivia Road. At the moment, everything is perfect in our house and we are waiting. If the water continues to rise, then we will go to the nearby school. Villages in Tonga are surviving on whatever they have at the moment as road access is blocked by the flood. Like right now, this is only take care of ourselves. And everyone from the village, like, you know, just helping for each other. At midday, I'm standing here at the Cornivia Road. As you can see, that the road is still flooded and are not accessible to any vehicle. It actually took more than 30 minutes for the residents here to walk from their home to the main road. Meli Tabanga, FBC News. 18 people were rescued by response teams in Waila, Nosori, as floodwaters entered their houses on Feeder Road early today. Pranita Prakash was there and reports that a number of families had started moving to higher ground when they were caught off guard. Floodwaters reaching homes. Household items floating away and people stuck on the roof of their houses. This was the scenario in Wailab. Amongst those who had to be rescued included a toddler. 
I was just thinking about the young ones eh? in the house. We have some some students who came spending their holidays at home. I was just thinking about them, and I'm very fortunate that I was I'm able to bring them to the dry grounds. Eh? For 63-year-old Inder Deo Govind, they have been facing the brunt of Mother Nature since Friday. This is the worst one. Water rises and then goes down. This has been the situation for us in almost one week. When we visited Weyla Fida Road this morning, 18 people were being rescued by the rescue teams. People are now taking precautions and moving to higher grounds. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. People living in Nosori are hoping floodwaters start to recede soon. A rescue team including the police, Navy and National Fire Authority has also been activated and have been helping those who have been affected. Pranita Prakash once again with this report. This was the situation in Nosori earlier today. Residents say they have never experienced such a situation where water level in the Reva River rose to such extremes. From the morning till from 6 o'clock in the morning, We've been sitting down there and putting marks on, on the banks. And you can see our marks, the water keep coming up. Uh, this is the first one again that came up to this level uh, uh, after Kina. Here. For many families, they are running out of food items. Very hard we're looking for the food. Say we can take the bread from the shop. Our kids at home, small babies at home. So we have to come and take the bread for our kids. Kina. Kina, Winston, all those floods we have seen. It. The current situation faced by people in Nosori has brought back old memories of the destruction caused by Cyclone Kina 23 years ago. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Navua residents not spared. And Gawia villagers start clean up. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, and Domo Ibiti, and Bonga and Bianca. Radio Fiji One, Welcome back to FBC News. Movement in Navua town was restricted last night as the water level rose faster than anticipated. Some residents moved to evacuation centers while business owners in the town stayed up throughout the night with fear of flash flooding on their minds. Rohit Deo with the story. A dreadful sight as residents of Navua could not do much with the sudden growth of water level in the river from about 6 p.m. yesterday. About 20 families from the Alia Koro had to take shelter at the Latter-day Saints Church Evacuation Center. Now there are currently 16 to 20 families that are here, but more will come later. Resident Inoke Nawanga says his family had come to the center on Saturday, but was sent back yesterday morning by government officials. We were here from last Saturday and yesterday morning government officials told us to go back to our homes. But we know that floodwaters will continue to rise. That's why we came back. An anxious businessman, Rajesh Darshan, who runs two major supermarkets in the town, was one of those who stayed up the whole night to monitor the situation. Thank you. We're praying hard to God that uh, the water will recede, but uh, we have done our part. We, are, uh, we already moved things on the higher grounds and we're looking forward that uh, from here the water level will recede. That's our hopes are high. The past experience of floods in Navua fresh on his mind. 
confident that uh, uh, we have already seen one flood here in Navua and uh, that time we had this shop here and uh, the water did not enter into our shop so that's the confidence we have that it won't rise that high. 2004 was the last time when floods caused major devastation in Navua. For now, these residents are relieved that the heavy rain from the tropical depression failed to cause any major damages in the district. Rohit Deo, FPC News. Singatoka was also not spared of the floods due to the heavy rain. This was the scene near Nahingatoka this morning, with floodwaters covering parts of the Queen's Road, leaving people stranded at both ends of the town. The highway was later opened after the floodwaters receded. Well, it's been a turbulent week for the people of Gawia in Lamy. As Rachel Nath reports, many residents who were affected by floodwaters took advantage of the sunshine and have started their cleanup. This is what the surroundings of Gawia look like today. A vast difference from what it was like up until yesterday. Langivula was amongst those whose houses were submerged by flood waters. Friday night, it came up to inside the house. The flood, eh? It's about to the knee height, and I was uh, staying inside. Floods are not new to Vula, who has resided in Gawia for more than 12 years, but the fear factor always remains. It's very damaging. Eh? Even last uh, night, yesterday afternoon, very windy and it's very dangerous eh? mm -hmm. to move around. For Penny Nararavuso, she is more than grateful to have lived through another wrath of Mother Nature. Water right up here. Mm. And uh, so some have to swim, eh? yeah. some uh, children have to swim, eh? okay. so they have, we get used to it because we have staying here for so long. Eh? The flood waters have receded and the cleanup has begun. The people of Gawia are hopeful that the sunshine remains and the heavy rain warning forecasted for Fiji does not eventuate. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Evacuees at the Nandera Methodist Church Hall today received food rations from government. Prime Minister Vorenge Banimarama says he has been to some evacuation centres, delivering supplies and seeing what can be done to areas who have been affected by floodwaters. Banimarama says a food ration should last the evacuees a week. The military will see all the details about your food rations, about the delivery and equally distributing the rations to each and every one. Rain from the current tropical depression has caused major landslides around the country, affecting hundreds of homes. USP lands expert Paula Rangeukai says landslides have destroyed houses, leaving many people homeless. Kelly Vidala reports. Many Fijians lost their homes in unexpected landslides during the heavy downpours over the past few days. Uh, two major causes of uh, landslides. One is natural causes, which uh, are triggered by earthquakes. You know, volcanic eruptions and simply the prolonged uh, uh, rainfall activities, you know, prolonged rainfall like what we experience right now. Of course, it costs the soils to uh, saturate it and easily it wither, wither away. The, the risk, the major risk for the landslide is that uh, it can happen uh, all, of a sudden, all of a sudden and then can happen very slowly. Rangel Kai says a landslide picks up speed and is more devastating than a landslip, where a large section of earth moves a bit but doesn't tend to have much momentum. One way to secure the ground is with more trees. And we spoke with Atunaisa Ratumbaka, who has been doing just that. The recent landslide shows that we need to plant more trees. And in my village, that's what we're doing so that there's no damage to houses and family lives. We planted mahogany and pine, but it still happens because most people don't care. USP lands expert Rangyuk Hai says people are not to take the impacts of landslide lightly as this can have its effects on the economy, but most importantly, their daily livelihood. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Almost 270 staff at the Fiji Ports Terminal Limited shared a bonus payout of $284,000 today. The bonus was in recognition to those who have made significant contribution towards improving port efficiency and productivity. The payment is in addition to the already paid $283,000 performance payout three months ago. It is very important for us to always understand that if productivity increases, 
then everybody benefits. If the productivity levels of the port increases, if the company makes enough money to buy better equipment, it makes your working life a lot easier. When you have better equipment, you have greater productivity, not only will profits increase, but you'll have more and more ships coming to Fiji. Well, sports is up next, and here's Jamie. Thanks, Amrita, and good evening in sports after the Fiji football to name new coach in three weeks. This and more coming up. Bula, I'm Duri from Nassin Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Vodafone Fiji 7's Olympic gold medalist Vatemo Ravavo has been named in the Fiji Warriors extended squad to prepare for the World Rugby Pacific Challenge next year. Fiji football's next national coach is highly likely to be from Europe. PGFA President Rajesh Patel has confirmed that they have shortlisted two candidates. Patel also confirmed that the two are from France and Germany. The new coach's contract is expected to be finalized by mid-January. No decision has been made yet by the Fiji FA on the protests filed by Nandunga. The Stallions filed protests against Rewa and also against the player Nandi, who played two matches for the Jet Setters. Fiji FA President Rajesh Patel says he has just got into the country and a decision is expected to be made at the next board meeting, which is scheduled for the 7th of next month. All white striker Shane Smeltz, who won the Golden Boot in his second season with Wellington Phoenix, is returning to the club where he began his A-League career. That's sports for this evening. Weather's up next with Amrita. Well, the weather certainly changed today as warm, sunny conditions covered most of Fiji. The disastrous downpours from the tropical depression seem to have passed, leaving warm, humid conditions. However, there is still a heavy rain warning for Vanwalevu, Taviuni and Lao. All centres recorded temperatures in the low 30s today. As for tomorrow, a mix of sunshine and light showers across Viti Lebu, while parts of Vanwalevu and the north can expect heavy showers. And looking ahead to Thursday, the last of the rain is expected to clear away as fresh moderate winds move in from southeast. At sea, in northerly winds 25 to 30 knots with gusts of up to 40 knots, rough to very rough seas are expected. Recapping the main stories, floodwaters have ravaged the river delta. Aerial footage shows devastation caused by floods and residents take to rooftops to escape rising waters. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question, this week we ask, do drainage issues need immediate attention? To answer, visit our FBC website. Do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensizedfbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us those news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That was FBC News for tonight. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night. It's me, Simsta, here right from the Rekineki town. Our super breakfast show me my sunta hoon. Jab breakfast show me rehta hai Ashneer aur Sangeeta ke saath. Kese ke saath sunte sunte kya ra se do bhavi di ka show jiten shamle. You know something? Rekineki Mirchi FM is hot. Me hoon Shweta, Dukushan aur Sari se. Log dekhte hai Eid ka chand, lekin mera chand to Mirchi FM hai. My name is Jabir, I'm from Cornelia, Nasori. I'm listening to Mirchi FM. I'm listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is very hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.